Hi, for Liberty and Economics Review and libertyandeconomics.com, Nick Sorrentino. So today I wanted to talk about oil. Everybody's talking about oil. Uh, we basically opened the gates of hell uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and all this horribleness is spewing out into the ocean, killing everything in its wake, not to mention, um, you know, the economies of, you know, coastal uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and West Florida, uh, you know, I grew up in a beach town, um, Virginia Beach, and um, I'll tell you, you know, imagine being, uh, you know, a business owner in Destin, Florida right now. Uh, I mean, you've got to be scared out of your mind. This is your peak time, uh, and black stuff is washing up on your beach where it's about to. Um, just got awful. My heart goes out to those people. Not to mention the pelicans and the dolphins, too. Um, but I wanted to talk about, you know, oil and alternative energies. Um, unfortunately, in this country, when this debate happens, um, you know, there are some assumptions that are made that are not right. Uh, first, that, um, you know, when people hear uh, alternative energy, at least, you know, a lot of people I'm friends with, uh, conservatives, libertarian types, you know, I hear that, and they just hear, Subsidization, taxes, uh, regulation, scary, scary, scary. Um, and that's understandable because a lot of that stuff, uh, you know, that's a fair uh, reaction. Um, but um, the other half of, of kind of how the energy situation is seen is that often oil is looked at as kind of like the free market alternative. This is what the market demands. Um, it's an expensive energy, you know, and all this sort of thing. Uh, and so if you're for the market, you are for oil. If you're not for the market, if you're for socialism and, you know, regulation, you're for um, these alternative energies that need to be subsidized and so on. Well, the thing is, that's baloney. Um, oil is hugely subsidized and has been for a very, very long time. Um, the oil industry is incredibly powerful and uh, they have lots of money to throw around and so they have thrown around money so that they can get breaks. Um, not just tax breaks but actual tax money to them. Um, worldwide uh, it is estimated that the oil industry gets subsidies on par you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of half a trillion dollars every year. Um, now, you know, that, <laughs> that, that goes to many different places. I mean, for instance, in Saudi Arabia, you know, I mean, you know, it's, you know, whatever oil is, you know, gasoline costs you 35 cents a gallon or something like that. Same thing in Venezuela and Iran. And that's kind of how they keep their people happy. But that adds up. And then when you, uh, you know, you say, yeah, well, you know, hey, let's let's do a different type of energy. Let's look at wind or solar or whatever. Um, you say, oh, well, this is clearly not cost effective, um, you know, relative to oil. Well, the thing is, how can any industry compete um, with an entrenched industry that is subsidized to the rate, to the extent that oil is? Um you know, it, it it's not a fair a fair fight. Uh, now, I'm not encouraged. I'm not saying that wind turbines should be subsidized or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. What I say, what I need, what I mean to say is that when we're debating energy, we need to recognize that oil is not a free market either. It's not the free market alternative. It's not what the the market necessarily would always demand because the oil companies don't have to incur the real costs of their business because by political means they have uh, basically underwritten their business uh, with taxpayers around the world so as we uh, as we watch these horrible pictures uh, in the weeks ahead um, you know, we as libertarians conservatives 
um, we need to keep in mind that, you know, it's not just the, the crazy greeny hippie people that want alternative energies. And then there's like the sensible people that, you know, are like, well, we got to drill, baby, drill. Okay, this is all BS. <laughs> all right. Like, we need to start afresh. All right, so that's one issue. Another thing I want to talk about briefly before I go is the fact that uh, we likely have reached the point of peak oil. Now, this is a term that is used by the crazy greeny people all the time, okay? But it's something that the folks need to be aware of, all right? Generally speaking, it looks like the amount of oil that we're able to get out of the earth is on a decline. <coughs> now, that doesn't mean that tomorrow we're going to run out of oil. We're not going to. What it does mean is that we're going to have to go to places that are increasingly difficult to get oil, such as under 5,000 feet of water in the Gulf of Mexico, where if something breaks, we can't turn it off. This disaster is a perfect example of peak oil. We have subsidized oil to the extent that we have abused it, we have now gone to the top. We're now in the decline, so we're searching everywhere for it. It's still subsidized, so we're needing, you know, it's still whacking out the, the world market for energy. Um, and, you know, this is one of the results. And you know, the other results are, you know, wars in places like Iraq. Um, but anyway, that's for another post. So, anyway, think. When you hear alternative energy, don't roll your eyes. Um, I mean, we shouldn't subsidize it, but we shouldn't subsidize oil either. Anyway, till next time, I'm Nick Sorrentino.